Hi, this is Rachel from the Dotting Center. Who here loves rocks? Hello! So my rock collection has grown over the years and each little stone has its own story. This is where I started dotting and how I fell in love with this craft. Painting rocks is perfect for beginners because they're little bite-sized pieces of art that don't take a lot of time to paint and they're inexpensive and unintimidating. Today we're going to paint this little stone and I'm going to show you how to do it coming up. So here is a peek into my rock collection. These are all waiting to get painted. These two are from Idaho on a family vacation. I literally plucked them right out of the riverbed. Just listen. That was so fun. And that was a beautiful day. And now I have two stones that are shaped like hearts that I can paint. I Sometimes I just add a base coat. These are Mexican beach pebbles that you can pick up at Lowe's for, I think I got a 25 pound bag for eight bucks. There was hundreds of stones in there and this is all that's left. This is one that when it gets wet, it turns red. Isn't that so cool? It's just, they're so awesome. Everyone is unique. They're dense and heavy and cold and they have- One hour later. Okay, fine. So yes, I love rocks and this one will do just fine. So we're gonna paint this one today. It's like a little medium size oval shaped rock, kind of like an egg, very pretty. For this project, we'll be using these paints. All of them are listed in the description box below. For the tools, it's very simple. We're just gonna use the dotting tool set from the dotting center. This is a full set, seven pieces, 14 different dot sizes. And then we're gonna use the five 10 line divider stencil from the divider collection. That's the yellow one or the aqua one. Sometimes they change color. And then we're gonna need a chalk pencil and a paintbrush for our base coat. This is a beginner level project. So today we're gonna to use fluid acrylic paint. Uh, this dries flat, but it's very easy to use. It falls off the tool really well. Uh, you don't have to worry about mixing or anything as far as uh, puffy dots. It's just very easy paint to work with. I'm using Deco Art Americana and Golden Brand. Now look at this one. If you see that your paint isn't fully mixed, see how it's still kind of got that clear solution mixed with the pigment? Mix it all up. If you don't properly mix it, your paint will crack when it dries. Now, no video of mine would be complete without a mistake right up front in the very beginning of the video. That's how I do things here at the Dotting Center. Now, I completely broke my rule that I always have. In every other video, I say, use chalk paint as your base coat if you're going to use a stencil. And so what did I do? I didn't use chalk paint. I was like, oh, this color is really pretty. I don't have it in a chalk paint, so I'll just use this one. Well, you'll see what happens when you use a regular acrylic. It just doesn't have the teeth to grip the chalk pencil. But basically for this base coat, I'm doing a oval shape, just mimicking the outside edge of the stone. And I'm not making it super big. I want some margin of that stone because it's so pretty. It's got such a pretty surface. I want the stone to, uh, to show. Now because this is an oval shaped stone, I originally thought I was going to just quarter it and do uh, a, you know, 8 to 16 divider. But in this case, I think just to make it a little bit more interesting, I'm going to use my 5 and 10 divider. This is just going to take that stone and divide it into 10 equal segments. What I did is I used a little bit of blue tack putty in the center to hold the stencil in place. And then 
using my chalk pencil, I'm going to draw the lines on the stone. Now what you can see here, see how the pencil does not want to draw over that acrylic? It's too shiny. It's not chalk paint. Chalkboard paint would accept that chalk pencil really well. Um, but that's okay. You can still kind of see the line and really that's that's all you need. It's not, um, you don't need it to be super bright. So you just want to draw each of those lines, pinching on either side of the stone to get the stencil to flex around it and then take it off. And there you go. Now you have it segmented into 10 segments. Pretty cool. And then you just want to clean up the lines and then as a final thing, just take that putty right out of the center and you're ready to start painting. Now let's start right in the center with tool number nine. And you'll see the tool size is up in the right corner of the screen and the paint color is on the top left of the screen. Now we're going to place a white dot on every other line. This is going to give us five dots. And now in between those white dots, we're going to use the number two tool, which is the same tool. You just flip it over to the other side and that's the larger side. And we're just going to place a apple green dot right in between each of those white dots. Now you can see there's a little bit of space in between those dots. Let's just fill it with a teeny tiny gold dot all the way around. You might find that some spaces are smaller than others. And in the beginning, I would say that the first row of dots is probably the most important, just sets you up. So you want to get that right as right as you possibly can without getting too in your head about it being perfect. Now for the second row, we're going to come in with larger dots immediately. We're going to add a blue harbor dot right at that 12 o'clock position. And then see the next small white dot? We're going to add another dot right on the same line. So what you do is you skip a line in between. So it's every other line that you dot. And this one goes right next to the white ones. Now in between, we're going to add a Kelly green dot in a smaller size. Now using that big tool number nine, let's go over the top of each one of those blue harbor dots with some sea breeze. I was hoping to get a shot of the palette as well as the tool so you could see just how much paint is required on the end of your tool. It's not really that much. You can obviously adjust it. Like see here, I'm doing, I'm going to go around each one of these big dots. So I really want to load up that number one tool with as much paint as possible because I have a long way to go around the outside of that dot. Now this is in real time. This isn't sped up or anything so that you can see just how long it takes to dot these tools. And also you can see how shaky I am. You might notice that you are shaky as well and that's totally fine. What I've found is that in the beginning of a project, I'm the most shaky. And then as I start dotting, I actually, it's this weird biofeedback thing that happens where the act of dotting calms you down as you do it and you actually shake less towards the end of a project. It is so wild. <laughs> it's, 
it just proves that it's calming you down as you do it, which I love, which is part of the reason why I dot anyway, is to just chill out, take time out, do something that is focused and uh, controlled and kind of rein in the anxiety of the day and the stress. And you can actually see in your tool as you paint that it's less shaky towards the end, which is really kind of magic to me. So now we're gonna use the number two tool and do a dotted border around those Kelly green dots. And you can see that the dots are largest when you first place your first dots and then as the paint kind of gets used up on the tool, the dots get smaller. And you'll just do that around each one of those green dots all the way around. Now, I didn't say this in the beginning, but your stone is going to be different than mine. There's no two stones are alike. That's the thing about natural stones. So this design can go on any shape of a stone. So don't worry if yours looks different than mine. Yours is going to wrap around your stone in a different way. If it's bigger, it'll be flatter. Uh, you know, you'll have more margin around the edges. If it's smaller, you might be already wrapping towards the back. But um, no matter what, this, this design will look good on whatever stone you put it on. So I would just recommend giving it a shot, seeing where you're at at the end. You might have to continue the design in a different way. But if you follow the pattern and you follow the colors, you will be surprised how, how this will just work on whatever stone you have. Okay, so now we're in the danger zone. This is when you have wet paint along the edges of the stone and it gets to be real kind of difficult trying to hold on to the stone and paint while things are wet. If your fingers end up touching and then you have that wet paint, you get into a problem. So after these dots, I probably put the stone down and let it dry. I just, I can't tell you how many times I have put my finger in a wet dot on the side of a stone. Okay, so yeah, you can see that I did let those, uh, the paint dry before going in and adding more dots here. It just allows you to handle the stone a lot easier than if things were wet and you had to kind of maneuver around wet paint. All right, so that is the first layer of dots. Now what I usually do is I go in with all the colors and add some white. We're gonna just lighten up those uh, colors so that they are a few shades lighter. And then we're gonna add top dots, adding some interest and dimension to the dots. So with the top dots, what you usually do is you go over the first level of dots with a smaller size tool in a different color. And what we're doing here is just using the lighter shade of the bottom dot to add uh, a smaller dot right on top. And that just gives it 
a different look. Now, one thing you might notice is that when I'm going over the top, a lot of times I'll steady my hand with my pinky. See how I touch the stone with my pinky first? That kind of anchors my hand so that it's less uh, kind of wobbly up in the air, kind of not attached to anything. So ground your hand by using your pinky on the stone first. So here I added a top dot, but do you see how it just wasn't light enough? It didn't pop enough. So I went and grabbed my flat, large silicone tool and just removed that dot. You can use a, you know, a cotton swab or whatever you have, but take that dot right out and then dry fit the tool that you want. And then let's just add gold and see how that looks. So that pops. I like the way that looks. See how that's a lot more of an interesting color change. So most of this video is showing real time how slow that the process is. It's just dot after dot, just very slow, methodical, calming. Most of my videos I speed up, um, you know, especially the more advanced uh, stuff that I do. But I think for beginners, it helps just to see exactly how much like you just place a dot you fuss with it you look at it you you know go get more paint it's slow and calming and because this is on a stone it almost feels like we're we're just on a journey here there's no this there's no need for this to be a masterpiece this isn't a big scary canvas that we spent a whole ton of money on this is a, a stone that we are just gonna decorate and make as pretty as we possibly can. It's gonna give us some creative time in our day and just slow us down. Also, can you check out what's going on with that green on top of that purple right now? It's like this vibrancy that's happening. That's pretty cool. I like it when stuff like that happens. So now what I'm doing, this is an oval shaped rock. So there's gonna be more design area on the top and the bottom, like the north and south of this stone, where extra design elements have to be put in to fill in the space. So that's what's going on here. This is at the 12 o'clock station on my stone. And I'm just filling in this blank space right here with some dots to try and get the paint at the same level as it is on the sides because that design has wrapped around those sides beautifully and now we're just filling in the space in the top and bottom so that they all kind of match up.
Okay, so here it is. Everything has dried. Now we're going to work on the sides and we're going to wrap this design down the sides and onto the bottom. And this is a technique that I use with uh, a lot of my stones. It's just this lacy outer edge. We're going to use the same tool. This is tool number two for the entire sides and bottom. And you'll see that there's a pattern that we're going to do. So you're going to take your number two tool and just dot an outline around each of those blue harbor dots in that lightened Kelly green. And then we're going to just do alternating rows of different colors all the way down and underneath the stone until it kind of wraps around the edges. So from here all the way down to the bottom edge of your stone, we're going to alternate our colors in these scalloped dotted arc shapes, just alternating this uh, blue harbor and gold. And then the other ones are just going to alternate those green colors. And you'll see how they connect down at the bottom. So you can see this pattern is just easy to pull uh, down the sides and on the bottom edge of your stone. I like to alternate the colors and do them as rows so that they, so that each row kind of locks in. You can kind of keep an eye on your spacing a little bit better if you alternate colors. Also, it does not matter if you have the same number of dots. Uh, it really will look good no matter what you can have look that one has what four on that side and then I can only fit two on that side that's totally fine it's totally fine it's just you know you might find that you have more rows than I do you your stone might be bigger it might be smaller but that is super cute like a little birthday cake really neat so now I think I have enough rows. I like to have some of the stone show through on the bottom. So I'm going to place this down on a towel and let that dry. And now while the bottom is drying, I'm going to go ahead and add my mark. And there it is. So hey, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you all liked this video. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel because I have way more videos to come. And as always, you can meet me over at thedottingcenter.com for all of your dot art supply needs. I hope you all have a fabulous day. Until next time. Bye.